Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Warfare Ecology. Listen, prepare yourself. Today is going to be a phenomenal day, so I hope that you are ready. You know, we always have a great week here on Warfare Ecology. We're talking about Relationship Monday with Dr. Seymour, Apostle Baxter, and Apostle Evans, and Bishop Bloomer. Eschatology Tuesday with Dr. Williams. Wednesdays and Fridays have been a day with the bishop, and I hope that you guys have been enjoying those. And then Thursday, the deliverance team. So go ahead and do your evangelism and let this serve as your evangelistical tool. And like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. Today is going to be a great day. So I hope that you are ready. Go ahead and get your questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com and we'll do our best to get those questions answered for you live on the air today. All right, so we've been doing a lot of conversation just about entrepreneurship and we really, really need to kind of look within ourselves. Of course, I've been talking about that self-inventory, but you know, as you begin to try to map your plan out and see what it is that you need to do, we're going to go back to our, uh-oh, I lost my slide. We're going to go back to our foundational where we have to kind of just look at the different steps that we need to do. We need to put some strategies in place, set some goals just so that we can move forward. You know, it's always there's safety in a multitude of counsel. So I encourage you to continue to keep people around you and let things be the way that they need to be. So because, you know, as we start talking about entrepreneurship, there it goes, entrepreneurship, as we begin to develop and figure out which direction that we need to go, there's some questions that you're going to need to ask yourself. So you're going to, you know, number one, write it, what is your vision? What do you hope to accomplish? How do you expect to move? And these things, as you're, as you're doing your research and you're brainstorming the, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, the how, all of that stuff right there, all of these items are actually items that will be a part of your business plan. I encourage you to do a good, a good, to just kind of take your time in developing the things that you need to do and write your business plan because that is something that you will need going forward if you want to get some type of funding through another business entity. And so you're gonna um, do some strategies, figure out what strategy you wanna you wanna take to reach the market that you're trying to reach and write some goals. Hands down, that's what it comes to is just kind of putting those goals in place and seeing what it is that you have. So I encourage you to keep looking within yourself and see what it is that you have to offer because I promise you, you do. And you know, the, monetizing those things that we do or that we already know how to do is the easiest way to start a business. And it's the most economical because you can you don't need a skill set. You've already got it. So just see what you can do write yourself inventory out and then create a plan for what it is that you want to do to launch your next business or your first business so i encourage you for today go ahead and get your questions ready put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com and while you're doing that go ahead and send us your testimony Tell us how the Lord has been moving on your behalf because we all know he is up to something. Yes, he is. We are overcomers and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So email us at media at bishopbloomer.com and let your testimony serve as that elimination of the process blessing for someone else. We would love to hear from you and stay tuned for our next food giveaway. We are doing one on a monthly basis, so I hope that you guys are sharing this information. You can always stay on top of this at feedandfoundation.org. That is where all of our information for the food giveaways are listed. So we thank you for all the seed that you continue to sow into this ministry because it is allowing us to be a blessing to the community, not just stateside, but also abroad. So thank you for standing strong with us. So today is going to be a great day. I want you to go ahead and get your questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. We thank God for Warfare College for coming to your homes today. 
this is uh, Eschatology Tuesday. Eschatology Tuesday. Everyone that's watching, hit like, share, like, share, like, share. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing each day. Each Tuesday, we're getting closer to, to you know, so many things we're getting closer to. And so he's giving us wisdom of how to deal with things, how to save and how to maneuver and giving us wisdom on the, on the Bible prophecies and unveiling it. And it's a great, it's a great time. It's a great time. I learned a lot just by listening because Revelation, one of those books, you know, I, you know, I knew a few scriptures in Revelation, but it, it just didn't make sense to me. It didn't, didn't make sense about, you know, the, the symbols and stuff. But, you know, as you un mm -hmm. unveil it, it's just amazing. Um, because these are the times of the end that knowledge will be increased, and so now we can really understand the book. And so it's, a, it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. We thank God for our apostle uh, Kevin Williams and for our General Warfare Bishop Bloomer, just just present, just spending the uh, Tuesdays with us and and, and and teaching us and, and open the word unto us, and so that we can have knowledge and be able to speak with knowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. So everyone, everybody hit like and share, like and share, like and share, like and share. This is Eschatology Tuesday. How many of y'all have been following us for the last two years? If you haven't followed us for the last two years, I'm sure that you have a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge that you can really, really pull from now versus before we came into this. And so we thank God for you and use that knowledge for the glory of God to upbuild his kingdom. Continue hit like and share, like and share. Let's make it happen today. Let's make today a big day. Let's make it a big listing day. Let's make it a, a, a great day today, a make great giving day in Jesus' name. So let's do it. Let's do it. We thank God for our general of warfare, Bishop Bloom. We give honor to him today also. Amen. So we're going to, to, to do it one more time before I open the heavens. Like and share, like, share, like, share, like, share. Evangelize. Let's do our personal evangelism. Let's share it with two or three people. Uh, let them know that the day is eschatology Tuesday. Eschatology Tuesday. Even wh whatever church you're in, whatever religion, whatever background you're in, you need to listen. You need to listen and gain knowledge of what's happening in these last days. So we thank you for joining us today. So stay, stick with us. I'm sure great things are going to happen to you and for you today in the name of Jesus. So what we're going to ask you to do right now is to listen get the heavens open over this show. Let's get the, get the oil flowing on this show. And, and, and once we get the heavens open, the apostle is going to come forth and is going to speak to us, the oracles of God concerning revelations. And it's going to happen in a few moments. So let's sow a seed and open up the heavens. Let's sow a seed and open up the heavens. And this is what I need you to do. Okay. Let me see. Let me get this thing right here. Out there. Okay. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Lo, the heavens were open unto him, and saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Sow a seed and open up the heavens. And we're going to sow on this wise. Of course, we have the, the $90 seed, the number of days the ark was at Obadim's house. And we all know that by heart process of elimination seed, some of you have already begun to sow. By all means, this is the seed that you need to sow. If so, the ninety dollars uh, process of elimination seed. Let's do it in Jesus' name. And also, we have the the open palm in the service of spiritual warfare. This is this is one of my favorites. Also, Cap Zen, Cap Zen seed. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Exodus three twenty one. Well, I'm not going empty. I'm not going empty. I'm not going empty. Cap Zen, I'm going to send you the first, send your praise first, send your praise first. And the Cap Zen is an open hand in the service of spiritual warfare, open hand in the service of spiritual warfare. Your praise is designed to choke the hell out of what's been choking the hell out of you. So we're going to, and that's a 27, that's the number 27. So 27 is Cap Zen. So we're asking those five, if five people sold the 90, 10 people sold the 27, and 10 sold a $21 seed. 21 is my fa all time favorite. I love this 21. 21 is an angelic seed. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Angelic traffic. You should just lay a hold this scripture right here and just, just, just watch things happen all during the day. Watch the angels orchestrate your, the angels will orchestrate your whole day. You can see your whole day being guided by angels and mishaps, you know, avoided because of angels. We thank God for the angelic seed. Uh, behold, I will send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. He's going to 
keep you in the way and bring you into the place. So that's his job all day long is to get you to the place that you need to be, uh, that you can receive what you need to receive from God, well, whatever the place may be. It may be a place of healing, maybe a place of deliverance, maybe a place of financial blessing. It may be a place of, 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 a, of, a, of a relationship mending, whatever it is, it's the angel's job to get you to that place. And so we're asking, if we can get 10 people to jump in for the next, just say for the next five minutes to just sow seed. We need your help to open up the heavens with the apostles coming on just very briefly. And we're going to make it happen for the next few moments. For the next few moments, I want everyone to start giving five sowing 90, 10 sowing 27, 10 sowing 21. We can all do this together and we'll make it happen today. And uh, you know, if you sow, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to reap. You know, that's, that's a scripture, it's just biblical principle. There's no way around it. You can't, you can't go around it. You can't go over it. You can't go under it. You can't go above it because it is the word of God. If you sow it truly, you truly will reap. Cast your bread on the water. And in a few days, it's going to return. So that's biblical principle. So if you give whatever way, God is going to come back. You're going to be blessed. There's no way around it. So let's start to do it now in Jesus' name. We need five sowing 90, 10 sowing 27, and 10 sowing 21. Let's do it now. Let's do it in Jesus' name. All right. You ready? You ready? Let's all give together. In the next two or three minutes, this is so. If there's twenty dollars sitting in your cash out right now, God meant it for this show. God said, just sow it and watch me multiply that seed. He's going to multiply it. He's going to make it great in the name of Jesus. Let's do it. You ready? Five sowing ninety, ten sowing twenty-seven, ten sowing twenty-one. Let's do it now in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Zell, Bloom at Bishop Bloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Take the gift. Text Boomer to 844-889-1559. You can mail those seats to GD Boomer Ministries, PO Box 3867 Durham. Give the five GD Boomer Ministries or payment link. Email media at bishopboomer.com. Again, cash app, dollar sign, journal of warfare. Zell, Bloomer at bishopboomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Okay? I want you to start giving now. In Jesus' name, 10, 20, 21. 10 sowing 27. Five people sowing a $90 seed. Amen. I'm speaking to you to open up the heaven. Let's sow this seed that we can receive the abundant harvest that God has prepared, pre prepared for us in Jesus' name. Truly, this is reaping season. This is a reaping season for those of you that have sown years before and years to come and, and have almost given up. Don't give up. Don't do not give up. You got to be consistent in your seed sowing. Be consistent. The farmer don't just sow one seed and go in the house and expect the harvest. He sows, he sows, he sows. He said he fills the whole field with seed, or the whole field with seed, that he can have an abundant harvest. So you can't get tired of sowing. You can never get tired of sowing. You just keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing, and your seed will, will, will go in the ground and die. And after it dies, it will it, the process of germination is going to come forth and bud and bring forth fruit. In this season, in Jesus' name, it's going to happen for you. Let's sow now. Five sowing 90, 10 sowing 27, 10 sowing 21. In the next three minutes, okay, let's do it now. In Jesus' name, you ready? You ready? I'm talking to you. In Jesus' name, let's do it. Dollar sign, general warfare. Zell, Bloom at Bishop .com. PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Amen. I see you giving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Those of you that have jumped in, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've already jumped in and began to, to give your sow your seed today. Thank you so much. Thank you for you. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Zell, uh, Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Let's do it. Let's do it now. I need three more people sowing to 27. I need three more people to 21. Three more people sowing 27 and three more people sowing to 21. I need your support right now. We thank you. Father, we thank you right now for those who, who have, a, have seed to sow and they're sowing it right now. We thank you that the abundant harvest is coming their way in the name of Jesus. We got, they've already received the word that they're going to be blessed. And so help them to release seed now that they can receive the blessing and walk into it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. I saw that seed. I see it. I see it. Okay. I need okay. three more people sowing to 21, two more sowing to 27. Three more sowing 21. Two more sowing 27. Amen. Let's get these heavens open. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so faithful. God. You're so faithful. God sees you. 
God sees you. If you got God sees you, He's looking at you. God sees you sowing every day. He sees you sowing every day. He sees you, and the reward is coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I'm a witness of it. I will witness. We that are watching what I call you, those that are participating, we see the seed taking root and taking. We we see God doing great things. We see it with our own eyes. We see God doing great things. We see Him, and so we can admonish and we're going to encourage you. To don't stop giving. Don't stop giving up yourself. Don't stop giving up your time, your talent. Don't stop giving up your finances. Do not stop. Continue, 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 continue. Because one day you're going to hit that moment. Don't miss your moment. One day you're going to hit that moment. And that seed is going to come up and it's going to show you what a great tree or great uh, harvest you're going to have. Let's do it. In the name of Jesus, dollar sign, journal of warfare. Zell, Bloomer, Bloomer.com, PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries, text a give, text Bloomer, 844-889-1559. I see you get your seeds are getting, getting to come like popcorn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Eschatology Tuesday. This is the day you get your pens, get your pads, get your Bible. You start taking notes because the word of God is going to be rich and powerful and going to unveil. It's going to be, a, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Let's do it. Let's get excited about it. Let's do it now. Let's do it. Amen. Let's all do it. So we got about a minute, a minute and a half of, of, of this heavens open, and we're going to move on to the next phase of this ministry, and, we, and it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Let's do it, y'all. Let's do it. Need, let's see. One more person sewing at 27. I need two more people sewing at 90, and one more person sewing at 21. Amen. One more person. I need one more in each category. Thank you so much. One more sewing at 90, one more sewing at 27. And one more sewing to 21. I'm about to say showing, showing. You know, I'm getting, getting tongue tied. Showing, 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 shredding, showing. <laughs> sewing to 21. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Tamil, you're looking over the top of your glasses. <laughs> well, because the glasses is just for reading, but if I need to see something, I got to go over the top. <laughs> what? So. <laughs> <laughs> So if you do like that, what it mean? You just wow. <laughs> Dr. Wow. Praise Lord Williams is on. <laughs> yes, he is. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna do one more time before he starts speaking, give him a chance to get his water and his cloth and stuff like that, get his, his notes and you know, and we getting ready. So give you one more chance. We need one more song 27, one more song in 21, one more song in 90. Let's do it now. The word of God is ready to be rich, it's gonna be ready to be powerful. We pray that the word of God will have free course today and that it will be glorified in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell, bloom at bishopbloomer.com. Pay, pay, PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Amen. Amen. Too many, you see, oh God, I saw, you saw I got excited when Apostle Williams came up. And I'm happy. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's, it's a great, it's great. Woo, I ain't got to take my text. Now I go, woo, I remember one day I was going to take a text. <laughs> but we thank you so much, Apostle. We're ready for you today, and God bless you. Good to see you. And uh, we, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Are you going to talk about UFOs today? No, sir. I'm not going to talk about UFOs oh, today. Oh, man. I ain't never had it written out. You, I want to see what each letter stood for and everything. I'm ready. What scripture? I guess I, I, I never turn over this other thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do that as a Bible study, and and uh, so I can have time to really deal in the details of it, of what UFOs are, what um, the aliens are, and uh, what ultimately it means concerning the body of Christ and how it. Uh, relates to the end of days and the end times. Wow. And so it is going to be uh, quite a very interesting conversation. Uh, and uh, I know that I'm going to garner a lot of questions. So um, I'll do, a, I'll, I'll probably do a major advertisement on it so that people will be able to tune in and get a perspective of really what the world uh, is coming to and what's happening in the world and really what it means. Uh, there are things in the earth uh, that um, like UFOs or USOs, U, uh, UFOs are unidentified flying objects, USOs are unidentified submerged objects. Mm. And what they do is that they go into the water and um, they go into the depth of the sea. Mm. And so but there is uh, quite a, 
there's a quite an interesting perspective that the word of God actually gives us and brings. And so everything to me is found uh, within the word of God. And mm -hmm. so my perspective of the word is very abstract. And so, um, and this is why I probably think a little different than other people because my view is extremely abstract. I'm going to even share some things today that um, just to give people a, um, a perspective of what is happening in current events, give them the opportunity to ask some questions about really what is taking place so that people can be aware of what's happening. So to, um, to each and every one of you, first of all, I would like to say um, blessings to you. I'm here with Pastor King and here um, with uh, Miss Evelyn and uh, here with uh, Vanita and Tamila. And um, I don't know if Bishop Bloomer is going to come on um, or not, uh, but um, he may come on a little bit later, but we, we will definitely do what we're called to do. Um, and so uh, for all of you, I would like for you, and I know that Pastor King has done this, but I wanna make sure that everyone, uh, if you would, that in order to keep something like this going, and I want people to understand that to keep something like this going and to keep it going, and it is commercial, commercial free, uh, so to speak, uh, then there is a cost that, that takes that. Uh, I'll give you an example, and that is with YouTube, if um, you just have regular YouTube and you're looking at something, it is interrupted with commercials and things like that that come through because that those commercials are what pay the bills. Well, when we give offering and things like that, that's what pays the bills to keep the, com uh, to keep the program um, to be commercial free. And so um, uh, I would like to, um, and I think that Bishop Bloomer has done a tremendous job uh, in, in such, but uh, there's definitely, um, as we're on, there is uh, consistently a cost that goes along with that. And so we wanna make sure that we take care um, of those things and the time and everything that goes into that. So each one of you, if you would um, just challenge yourself uh, to give a seed, uh, that would be a blessing, an offering, that would be a blessing. And so um, dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB ministries, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You can mail uh, it to uh, Gigi Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, um, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Give Lafay, put Gigi Bloomer Ministries in the search box and payment link media at bishopbloomer.com. Dollar sign for Dr. Kevin E. Williams, dollar sign Dr. Kevin E. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin E. Williams at gmail.com. You can mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina. 27406. And I want to tell you that we appreciate all that you do. We ask of you to split the seed. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And so we understand the value of coming together in collaboration. Um, the Bible consistently so tells us and lets us know that two is better than one. If you read the whole chapter of Ecclesiastes 4, you'll understand what the word of God is saying concerning that two is better than one, but three is better than two. And as all of us unite together, um, there is effective work that's going to be done in and for uh, the kingdom of God. I want to uh, share uh, several things with you. So if you would go ahead and give uh, right now, and uh, they put that up on the screen. I am going to ask um, that if you would uh, give a seed of $40 and split that seed, that would be a blessing, a seed of $40 and split that seed, that would be a tremendous blessing to of the things that, that uh, we have to do in and for the kingdom of God. Let me um, share uh, a, a couple of things with you. Uh, as I was talking before, and I won't get into uh, UFOs and aliens right now, but uh, what I will tell you is this, and that is that you're going to start experiencing uh, more and more of the word of God accurately uh, manifesting and coming to pass. Uh, there was a recent survey uh, that was done and nine out of 10 pastors have now concluded that, that we are in the uh, end days and 80% of those pastors uh, believe that the, um, that the return of the Lord will come back within their lifetime. That being said, 
um, that means that, that people are become more becoming more and more aware of what is happening. And it is programs like this that uh, give people not only a, a better understanding concerning the end of days, which we call eschatology, uh, but it also gives them a different level of clarity uh, when it comes to the symbolism within the word of God, what that looks like, really what that is, and really what's taking place. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to ask uh, Evelyn to uh, uh, to look in Ezekiel, uh, the 38th chapter. We're going to read a couple of verses there. I'm going to explain um, a few things, and then we're going to go to Daniel, the 8th chapter. I'm going to explain a few things there. And with all of this coming together, uh, it's going to um, definitely give us some clarity. Uh, we may slip over into the book of Revelations uh, and uh, show a few things there. But uh, all of this is to bring about uh, some level of value. Uh, and so uh, when we're thinking about uh, even Babylon, and some people are under the assumption uh, that Babylon is the United States, there's a lot of reasons why Babylon is not the United States. Um, if Babylon is the United States, then there would be a problem there because the Bible says, come out of her. Um, don't come out of mystery Babylon. Well, if, if Babylon is the United States, then the scripture would be telling all the United States citizens uh, to change their citizenship and then go to another country. The question is, go where? And sometimes we say things very quickly out of our mouths with not, without actually checking to see um, what does that mean and what would it mean uh, if the scripture actually said some of the things that, that people are just kind of putting out there and just opening up their mouths and just saying some things and throwing things out there. They're not considering the fact that if God is telling us to come out of Babylon, then every Christian that is in the United States would then would have to change their citizenship and then go into another country and become a citizen. Um, no, that's not what the Lord is saying, and that's not what the scripture is implying, uh, because um, the United States is not what some people are saying that it is. And so there's a lot of things in eschatology, I won't be able to get to everything today, but there are a lot of things in eschatology that we have to uh, kind of take a look at. Um, I will um, share with you um, as much as I can in the time that I have uh, to be able uh, to well, at least impart as much as I can to you. Uh, with that uh, being said, um, Evelyn, how are you today? I'm doing fine, Dr. Williams, and I pray you are. I am having a wonderful day. Uh, things are great. Uh, and um, I am just uh, very comfortable in, in this place uh, called the Word of God. And All so right. let, um, let's go to Ezekiel, if you would. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel um, 38 and would uh, read verse 1, verse 2, and verse uh, 3. And um, we'll stop there just for a second. And then I'll just a little bit more. And we'll take a look at a couple of these things. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right, so now I want you all to take a look at something. Um, take a look at uh, verse 2. And for those of you all that follow us on uh, eschatology, please make sure uh, that you are, you have your Bibles and things like that. And let's really make some sense out of this. Uh, and um, uh, I took my map down. So um, at some point I'm gonna have to put it back up and uh, share some things. So look at verse two uh, and uh, Evelyn, read that a little slower for me so that yes, uh, talk about it. Okay. Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog. Stop there. All right. So notice what it says, set thy face against Gog, and then it identifies to us the land of Magog. All right. Set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. All right. So we understand who Gog is. We understand the land is. All right. So now 
Um, um, set a, thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. All right, go ahead. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against him. All right, now go to the third verse. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. All right, so now here it is, Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Meshach and Tubal. So um, there is a discrepancy between um, those that understand eschatology of what these geographical areas are, what they mean. So I'm going to say that when you deal with Meshach, um, you're dealing with um, Russia and the area of Russia. Um, when you're dealing with Tubal, you're dealing with Turkey. Now, all of this is really important. Uh, Evelyn, I want you to read again, because we're going to make some good, good sense out of it. Starting at verse one. Verse two. Yes, sir. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. All right. Now, so if we're dealing with Russia and we're dealing with Turkey, what we're saying is that God is against them. Now, he is addressing the fact that he is against them and what they're doing. Remember, this is Russia and Turkey that we're talking about. Um, go to the fourth verse, Evelyn. Let's take a look at that. Let's. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. Just and for a I will second. Bring... Mm -hmm. All right. He says, I'm going to turn you back and I'll put hooks into your jaw and I'm going to turn you back. So what is he really saying? He's saying that I'm going to use a situation to cause you all to operate together. And then I'm going to put hooks in your jaw, which means that I'm going to pull you in the direction that I want you to go. Now, hooks in your jaw represents the symbolism of God using a situation or circumstance or event or events that he is going to use to pull um, um, Meshach and Tubal in the direction that he wants them to go. Evelyn, let's read the fourth verse again. Let's take a look. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shield, all of them handling swords. All right, so all of them handling swords. So now God is saying that I'm gonna pull you and I'm really gonna pull you into a situation of war. He said, and now these are the players that are going to be a part of this war. We know that Turkey is going to be a part. We know that Russia is going to be a part of that. Now, um, Turkey and Russia has had a strained kind of relationship. And <clears throat> what you are finding now is that you're dealing with ancient um, territories that the scripture is talking about that is going to play a major role in the end of days and what is happening even right now in uh, 2022. Now, um, these um, the next um, verse, if you would read just the next verse for me, verse five. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. All right, so eventually what he's saying is, and what we have is Persia, we have Ethiopia, uh, we have Libya, with in addition to Libya would be Sudan and all of them are coming together. So they're going to be a part of the system. Now there was another scripture uh, that addresses something else we'll deal with. Uh, we'll deal with uh, Daniel the eighth chapter and we will look at the ram and the goat and find out what's there. Now, uh, Dr. Williams, why is this important? The reason that's important now is the situation that we have right now with the Ukraine war and with Russia and with the United States is something that is um, we're really going through uh, quite a bit. For those that are not aware that the reason that pastors now and leaders are having more concern, as well as the fact that they realize that we are in the end of days is because of programs like this one that, that 
sometimes people listen to, sometimes they're watching, but they have listened. But sometimes you can listen just enough to know, wait a minute, I heard that before and I know where I heard it before. Let me go back and let me see really what's happening here. I have always um, believed that there are there is a short list of um, who would be considered antichrist and uh, things like that. All right. And so um, we do understand uh, right now that uh, Vladimir Putin is making some major, major moves uh, when it comes to um, Ukraine. Uh, we do understand that Turkey has been trying to mediate between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the reason being is because there are uh, Ukraine is a major wheat and grain uh, supplier. And so you have um, exports uh, con uh, concerning Ukraine that go into European nations and those have been halted. Uh, and so Turkey has been involved in the negotiation there. Turkey right now um, has, because I've got to kind of pull all of this together so you'll see how it merges in the word of God. Turkey right now has an issue with Syria because Syria is aiding and abetting, harboring um, terrorists that um, mean Turkey no good. Russia is backing Syria. Iran um, has some, um, some um, small sects, uh, sects that are there. Uh, and um, that they uh, financially support or they support with their weaponry, like the Houthis and, and uh, those like that. And so as a result, um, what uh, is happening is, is that Russia, Iran, and Turkey now are flowing effectively together. Um, if you've seen me on eschatology before, I've hinted to and even directly addressed that when you deal with uh, Daniel the eighth chapter, you are dealing with Iran and Turkey, all right? And I'll get to that in just a bit. And so the scripture tells us that there is going to be a tremendous move in the area of Russia and the area of Turkey. Well, is that happening today? Yes, that's happening today, all right? And so uh, President Biden at this time has not done a very good job when it comes to negotiating in um, West Asia that we may, call, we may call the Middle East. So um, you have um, Eastern Asia um, where you're dealing with China. Um, you have West Asia, but don't let the word Asia trip you up when you're dealing with West Asia. Now you're dealing with more of Iran, the Middle East in that area, all right? So we have East Asia, we have West Asia. And so the negotiations that, that President Biden has done in West Asia has not uh, been very effective. He has um, gone to Saudi Arabia to try to negotiate a oil deal to make sure the United States has plenty of oil coming through. And he came back uh, empty handed, no deal was done. And Saudi Arabia uh, was definitely on board to be a part of the, um, um, the Abraham um, Accord and still may be a part of the Abraham Accord because they are still working with and building their relationship with Israel. So that part is still um, kind of going in the right direction. This is gonna be a little tricky today because now we're talking about um, nations that are not playing nice in the sandbox right now. Because even though Saudi Arabia is doing very well when it comes to Israel, um, they also now are open to conversations that they have been against um, Iran the whole time, but at least they're having conversation with Iran. Now, the question is, how is that gonna work? Because I've got, like I said, I've got a slew of things I've got to explain to you. Because here it is on one side, Saudi Arabia is dealing with Israel. On the other side, they're also dealing with Iran, but Iran doesn't like Israel and Israel is gonna protect themselves from Iran. The people that are backing Israel is the United States. So the United States is the superpower that backs Israel. But Iran doesn't like the United States and does not like Israel either. And they want to do whatever they can to blow up the United States and destroy everything in the United States and to destroy Israel and blow them off the map. 
Now, what you have then is you have the theological side and the eschatology side that is on one side. You have the political side that is on the other side. And the word of God, what they're doing politically is unfolding what the word of God is really saying. Now, about five years ago, 10 years ago, um, these um, countries that are playing together um, normally would not have been in unity. But now what you have is you have um, you have the United States in a very vulnerable position right now because uh, the United States, um, it is believed um, that is based on um, that is based on um, media presentation, um, based on the um, um, Afghanistan pullout, um, that is based on um, uh, things that have happened with our president that is that has not shown him to be strong, but has exhibited a weak side or feeble side, has emboldened then China, it has emboldened then Russia, um, and it has emboldened Iran uh, to now uh, make the moves that they, they feel that they need to make. Well, the Lord now, what he is saying here in scripture is that all of the relationships really are coming together in order for Ezekiel 38, Daniel 8 to manifest and to happen. And so as Russia and Iran um, they have signed and struck a $40 billion um, um, oil, gas, energy deal, all right? So they have, uh, remember China had done a $20 billion deal over a certain amount of years. Russia has done a $40 billion deal. And so they've upped it 100% um, um, from China. And then after that, they've done some other things such as now, um, um, the details of the deal is that Iran is going to aid when it comes to um, oil fields and gas projects. Uh, so they're going to work uh, with Russia when it comes to that. Uh, Russia and Iran now is going to create a financial mechanism that is going to buck the, um, the U.S. dollar so that um, there are multiple ways of money to flow and that is not going to be subject to the U.S. dollar. The sanctions that um, the West, which is the United States and the European Union, um, has placed on uh, Russia, which they thought was working initially because the um, the um, um, the um, the oligarchs uh, that were in Russia, that are the billionaire oligarchs that are in Russia, that is backing Putin, uh, they felt like taking their yachts and freezing their accounts and things like that uh, was going to stop it. Um, but what Putin did was he doubled down and then he started negotiating in the back. One of the things that you have to know about Vladimir Putin, which is very uniquely connected then to um, this system of the Antichrist and what we're talking about with Gog and Magog, um, is that there is a smoke screen. So the way Putin does things is that he does things in the front, hides his hand in the back as negotiating something on the side that by the time you see really what he was doing, you realize you were distracted. And so, um, you know, I've always said that greatness moves in silence and that if you're going to be effective when it comes to um, tremendous things when it comes to the um, when it comes to growth, kingdom of God, working together, things like that. Uh, you don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Well, that is a kingdom principle. But remember, Satan himself knows how the system of the kingdom works. Now he doesn't. He is not all knowledgeable because he does not have the operation or the strength of the Holy Ghost. But he is intellectual. And because he is intellectual and he is knowledgeable concerning kingdom things, um, he can influence um, and um, even possess uh, politicians and those that are uh, that are managing over geographical areas to, in order to um, move towards his agenda, which ultimately is the plan of God and what we deal with concerning the end of days. 
Now, what you're going uh, to um, what you're going to start seeing is that now, uh, as Russia has built this relationship with Iran and has got this forty billion dollar deal, Saudi Arabia now has come on board, and ultimately there's going to be an oil deal with that. So Russia, who was um, suffering for a short period, now um, Vladimir Putin has proven to be a master negotiator and as a result has come behind. Now, what is that doing? I want you to hear me closely. What is that doing? Because as I'm talking about the news, as I'm dealing with um, um, all of these um, things about um, Iran and Russia and them building banking and financial mechanisms and, and different things like that. What really, what, what is the game plan here? The game plan is to isolate the West and the big strength that is in the West, which is the United States and kind of isolate them from the rest of the world. Right now, we do not have the representation that is necessary in order to do great negotiations. Um, our current president, and I respect and honor um, leadership, and I respect and honor him in his position. Um, but you know, at the same time, we have to look at the results. And the results are that when he came back from his trip, he didn't come back with any deal that would benefit uh, the United States. And Vladimir Putin now has uh, gone to benefit Russia. And because he has gone now to benefit Russia, um, what we are uh, seeing now is that Vladimir Putin seems to um, be um, gaining ground. Now we're into the stage of the creating of the system of Gog and Magog. That's what I'm trying to say to you. All right, now, in Daniel, the seventh chapter, and all of this, like I said, is going to make sense. It reveals to us that by symbolism that the United States um, has and will and has break, broken away from um, the lion. Um, the eagle's wings has broken away from the lion. We'll read that in just a second. But the what it's revealing also is that the United States will not be involved when it comes to a lot of the things that, that are taking place, which means that we're going to be isolated. Now, is that good? To be honest with you, if the United States is isolated from all of this, that is tremendously good. And the reason it's tremendously good is because the outcome, the outcome according to Revelations, the 12th chapter, and I, I'm quoting a lot of scriptures and a lot of you all may be watching and saying, okay, where is he getting this from? And all of that, if you've been following me, you know exactly where I'm getting it from. But for those individuals uh, that are not aware, Evelyn, um, instead of going to Daniel 8, let's go to Daniel 7 and let's deal with uh, verse um, Daniel 7 and verse 4, if you would. Okay. Yes, sir. And it reads, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Okay, so we understand that, that the, um, the lion represents um, Britain at this point. Um, the eagle's wings that's on him is the United States. Um, the separation is the Declaration of Independence. The United States has become an independent nation. We understand. We also understand that um, that that means that eventually, as the beast is built, um, that we see in um, in, in um, what that John saw in Revelations thirteen verses one and two, that the United States, those eagles' wings, is not a part of that. And the reason being it is because the eagle's wings um, is found again in Revelations, uh, the 12th chapter. And Evelyn, if you would go to Revelations 12 for me. Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, you would uh, go to verse 14 and read that for me. And it reads, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness 
and to her place where she is nourished for time and times and half a time. All right, so we, we do understand that the eagle's wings of the United States, we don't see the eagle's wings anymore after Daniel 7 and 4 until we get to, Revel, until we get to Revelations um, 12 and 14, all right? And so what is the eagle doing slash the United States doing? The United States is protecting Israel. So according to the word of God, we're going to be protecting Israel, but well, we have to consider something. And what does that say? Because a lot of times people are nervous and say, well, if we're isolated from the earth, really, what does that mean? That really means that we're, we're obviously we're doing very well, that even during the tribulation period, that the United States is still going to be okay. Now, that doesn't mean that everything is going to be like we see it now, but it does mean that based on our constitution, based on our declaration of independence, based on the amendments that we have, that the laws and the lawmakers, um, there is enough of them. And I'm going to say this, that I pray that um, people hear my perspective of this. If that is the case, then that means that, that the politicians that we have or the politicians that will be coming in or politicians that are going to keep us out of the antichrist world system, new world order. So that means that the, um, the independence of the United States is going to be key into this. It is obvious that we have to be doing decently well if our military, as well as the body of Christ, is helping Israel to be protected because the Bible says that she is being protected or covered um, when she is covered by these eagle's wings. Evelyn, would you read that again? And that is, I'm sorry, that is Revelations, the 12th chapter and the 14th verse. And to the woman, excuse me, <clears throat> and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time and time and half a time from the face of the serpent. All right, so now, so let's look at really what that is saying, okay? Because she is, um, she's given two wings of a great eagle. So that means the United States is protecting her and she is in her place. She is in her place. Read that part, that's just that part again, uh, uh, Evelyn, so that they can get it. And to the woman, were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. Stop, into her place. What does to her place mean? That means that she is not going to be removed out of Israel. That means that she's going to be in Israel because Israel is her place, but she is going to be covered by, um, by the United States, which means that, that the Antichrist and the Antichrist system is not going to be able to do what they want to do um, to Israel, all right? Please remember that the Battle of Armageddon is when the world organization, uh, which will be the beast itself, uh, the system of the beast itself that you see in Revelations 13 verses one and two, they're going to come in and they're gonna go after Israel. It is also obvious to me that the firepower of the United States um, is not going to be able um, to handle all of the firepower power that's going to happen when it comes to uh, protecting Israel. And that battle and that fight is going to be in the Valley of Megiddo, which is the Battle of Armageddon. It is going to travel 160 miles from the Battle of Armageddon all the way up to the Temple Mount. And um, the fight is going to, the conclusion of the fight is going to be at the Temple Mount with Israel losing. And then that's when Jesus is going to crack the sky and come in through the East Gate. And that he is going to take, um, according to um, Revelations of the 19th chapter, he is going to take the false prophet, the Antichrist and all, um, and throw them into the lake of, uh, to the lake of fire as well as the fact that he is going to defeat all of the forces of the Antichrist and the Antichrist system that has warred against, um, against um, Israel and against the kingdom of God itself. All right, so we do understand the United States is it's going to be key and we play a, a very major role. 
but the body of Christ, I would say, in the United States is what really keeps the United States on its toes and keeps it on um, a major um, and, and the major mindset. There was a question that was asked of me of what I thought about the Christian nationalist uh, movement. And so let me answer uh, that question uh, while I am doing this teaching so that people can get an understanding. Um, the, um, this Christian nationalist movement uh, simply is a movement that says that the United States is a Christian nation that was founded on Christian values by believers. And as a result, it should be respected, honored at a, as a Christian nation, and that the laws that are connected to it should be biblically based, based on the word of God. That is basically the concept of um, this um, new uh, Christian uh, nationalist movement. Um, there is a, the other mindset of this, the other mindset of this is um, to say that there are Christians in the United States and that there were Christians um, that, or, or people that had uh, Christian values that uh, signed the constitution, but yet instilled that this is a nation for every religion, for every creed. Um, and as a result of that, then the interpretation of laws should not be based on the word of God, but should be based on another view. All right. So that's the, the two that you have there. Um, as a Christian and as a believer, of course, my desire would be and to understand that the word of God is the final court of appeals. If I am going to be a Christian, then that means that I'm gonna take the word of God and take it for what it says and say that we should as much as possible line up with what the word of God says. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes for any individual that says I'm a Christian, but I keep making mistakes and things like that. This is why Jesus came because um, he came to redeem us from the curse of the law. According to Galatians third chapter, uh, the 13th and the 14th verse. And because he's redeemed us from the curse of the law, that means with the errors and the mistakes that you may make in life, that you don't necessarily have to go to hell because you made a mistake, because the mistake did not cause you to disconnect from your conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross, that he was buried three days, and that he rose with all power in his hand, that your mistake, your error, you're falling short, you have sinned, and whatever kind of sin it is does not exempt you from eternal life with Jesus Christ because you, re you have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, what is the curse of the law? The curse of the law is found really in Ezekiel when it says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. That is the curse of the law. The Bible says we are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So when you're dealing with the curse of the law, the curse of the law ultimately is one thing. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Remember, the scripture says in Romans, the sixth chapter, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The curse of the law is death. When you sin, there is death to it. When you look at the curses in the Old Testament, anytime you sin, that death was connected to it. And this is why they were um, killing animals for burnt offerings for sacrifices. This is where the Bible says in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, that um, the blood of bulls and of goats um, and of heifers cannot take away the, uh, the sins of men permanently, but God made him a body. He came um, and, and Jesus came to redeem us from the curse of the law. According then to Galatians, the third chapter, the 29th verse that we have, uh, because we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we are beneficiaries of the promises that he made Abraham, because now we are the seed of Abraham, um, because we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, because we're redeemed from the curse of the law, now um, our job then is to minister the message of Jesus Christ to as many people as we can. Vladimir Putin claims that he is a believer, but everything that he is doing is connected to what the word of God is saying uh, concerning Gog and Magog and the Antichrist and really what is taking place right now. 
for each and every one of us. Wow. I just feel like I've just been talking and raveling and raveling and unraveling and unraveling and unraveling. But I want you to see how politics is playing a major role when it comes to feeding into the narrative of um, the end of days. What you're finding now is, is that, and I don't know if you remember, in the month of May, Africa um, was um, appealing to the European Union and they were saying, listen, um, we need you all to lighten up on these sanctions because our food, um, there's a food shortage, food is going up. It's, um, we're having a difficult time um, paying Russia for uh, the food and navigating that food to us. And the European Union was not listening. Uh, when it came to gas and things like that, the European Union was not listening. And now, um, now that the European Union is, um, is they're suffering with their food and their gas, now they're lightening up on the sanctions, which means then that there is going to be at some point, hear what I'm saying, a coming together. Well, if there's going to be a coming together, because right now the European Union is setting up um, because they're supporting, they're supporting Ukraine, but they are lightening up on the sanctions. What does that say to me? What that says to me right now is that the relationships, the political relationships are being, um, um, uh, the political relationships are curing right now. I guess that's the word that I want to use. They're curing right now so that there can be some collaboration and some level of establishment. Eventually, and I want you all to hear me, eventually the United States is going to be isolated. The next election is going to be key because when that next election comes in, that, that is the president, in my opinion, that is the president that is going to be a major end time president. The end times have already started, we're already in it, but the next president is going to be a major end time president. And what that president does is going to determine many things of the unveiling of the word of God that comes forth. Let's go over uh, to Daniel, the eighth chapter, um, very quickly. And let's take a look at a couple things. I'll take some questions. Um, I'll take some questions uh, in just a bit, but I'm trying to make sure uh, that I get as um, much done uh, as I can uh, so that you see really what's happening. Um, with that being said, um, what we are dealing with right now uh, in um, Daniel, the eighth chapter, is going to be Iran and Turkey. Turkey is going to play a major, major role when it comes to the end of days. Very important. Uh, Evelyn, would you start reading at the first verse of Daniel, the eighth chapter? In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass, when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Yule. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Stop there, stop right there just for a second. All right, now, um, what you have is a ram. You have a ram with two horns. The scripture says in the fourth verse that the ram is pushing westward, all right? If the ram is pushing westward, um, watch this, and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Beast, what is he talking about? Nations, what is he talking about? Kingdoms, that's what he's talking about, that no beast can stand before him. So now he is pushing. Iran has already, in, um, and when you're dealing with westward um, and northward, westward is um, Iraq, 
northward is um, Syria. Um, uh, Saudi Arabia is going to be included um, into that because remember Iran had issue with Saudi Arabia even though they're talking um, the Gaza Strip and Yemen. Uh, all of that Iran has been doing. So are we in the scripture? We right now, according to Daniel the eighth chapter, we are experiencing the day of the ram. Because what do you have now? Iran is gaining influence. According to this scripture, they are gaining influence. And all of it is coming to pass. We see that Iran has funded um, the majority of the tyranny that has happened with, um, uh, with terrorists. Iran has been a major financial backer. Now, what kind of tyranny can, could they bring with China's $20 billion and Russia's $40 billion, the alliance to have with China, the alliance they have with, <clears throat> with Russia, you know, and also what they're doing in, in Syria? What could they do with that major power? They can create a verse four tyranny, and that's what they've been doing. So in my opinion, we are already in verse four in 2022. Verse four is happening right now and building right now. Okay. So the scripture says they're going to get to the point that nobody can really handle them. Nobody can stand before them. All right. Because Russia right now is not just made a $20 billion deal, but, um, and that's only for oil and gas, but Russia also, and you can check this out, Russia also is getting ready to do another deal with them. And it's an arms deal because Iran is very good when it comes to drones and their drone strikes, all right? And so the United States is as well, but Iran, um, when it comes to West Asia, they're probably the best at drone strikes um, when it comes to anything um, like that level of weaponry. And, it's, and Vladimir Putin now is getting ready to buy um, drones from Iran to do drone strikes. And that means that they can strike anything as large as a city block. They can strike as anything as small as an individual because they'll do drone strikes and then they have other small drones. All drones don't fly. Some drones also are like little um, robot cars and they look for their target. And while you're so busy looking up in the air, that small drone can come and actually assassinate and kill. Russia is getting ready to have that, all right? With that said, does that make Iran a major power? It does make them a major power. Erdogan right now, who is the president of Turkey, has an issue when it comes to Russia and Iran supporting um, Syria um, in, um, in what they're doing in harboring terrorists. All right. So it does not surprise me because the word of God is going to tell us that Turkey ultimately is going to strike at Iran to put them in check because Iran is going to get out of hand. And when they get out of hand, they're going to put them in check. Wow. I feel like I'm just teaching so much, but I pray that I'm making good sense because my intention today was to merge modern day information that you can find on the news right now with the word of God so that you'll know how close we are. Evelyn, would you read the, starting at the fifth verse of Daniel, the eighth chapter? And as I was considering, behold, an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Ah, all right. This he goat is Turkey. This he goat represents Turkey. Now remember, in Ezekiel, Tubal represented Turkey. But in Daniel, the he goat is what represents Turkey. All right. And so now Turkey is getting ready to deal with Iran. So if you want to know what's going to happen in the future when it comes to Iran and Turkey, please read Daniel 8 and you'll be able to see. Go ahead and read, um, Evelyn. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river and ran into him in the theory of his power. All right, so now Turkey is getting ready to, so in all of these deals, Turkey is going to build enough military strength and power to 
to then go against the ram. So remember, you have the goat, which is Turkey. You have the ram, which is Iran. And the goat is going to gain enough power to go against Iran or to go against the ram to deal with it. Would you read that sixth verse again for me, please? And he came to the ram that had two horns which I had seen standing before the river and ran unto him in the fury of his power. In the fury of his power, which means that Turkey is going to gain a lot of power in this. I hope this is making sense. And if it's making sense, I would like for you to give me a thumbs up when it comes, when it, when it is in the chat, please give me a thumbs up because um, no, no word is beneficial. If in turn, there is no understanding. The Bible says, Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse, wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get an understanding. The Bible says, according to Hosea of the fourth chapter and the sixth verse, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. He says, when you reject knowledge, he rejects us. We can be no priest to him. We cannot represent him. We have to have understanding. That means that we got to get sharper. That, that means we got to become more intelligent. That means we got to be, uh, become more in tune with the word of God, more knowledgeable in the word of God, more knowledgeable in revelations, more knowledgeable when it comes to eschatology, more knowledgeable when it comes to the end of days, so that it is not like one person or two people or three people that is ministering the gospel and ministering eschatology, but it is it is tribes and tribes of us that is doing this so that we take that information and we minister it in our churches. We minister it to our families. We minister it to businesses. We minister it to business owners so that the people of God have a clear understanding of what the word of God says so that it is not about um, this person got more knowledge than this person. It's not about that. What this is about is people in the body of Christ having enough knowledge to protect themselves, their family, and the body of Christ and their soul from what is for what the Antichrist is trying to do and what is taking place in the end of days. Um, Vanita, do you see a thumbs up? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, Evelyn, if you would, would you then read the seventh verse for me, please? And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with color against him. All right. Color. Everyone, color. color, color is bitterness. The word mm -hmm. color, bitterness. That's what that means. Bitterness. All right. So bitterness and anger. All right. So, um, Evelyn, if you would read the seventh verse again, and instead of using the word collar, would you replace it with the word bitterness and anger and let it flow like that? OK. Yes, sir. OK. And I saw him come close unto the ram and he was moved with bitterness and anger against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Stop. All right. So now what is happening is the scripture says that Turkey, and I don't know if the president of Turkey, which is Erdogan right now, is going to be that individual, but it looks like he is going to be that individual that is going to then eventually go after Iran and annihilate them. He is going to then, the scripture says um, that um, he is going to break the two horns. Well, the two horns are two leaders. So that means that those leaders are going to be assassinated and Erdogan and Turkey, I can't say Erdogan, but Turkey and whoever is leading Turkey at the time is going to then go after Iran, break them and then go in. And remember, all of these are Muslim nations. Turkey is a Muslim nation. Iran is a Muslim nation. So nobody is going to be able to deliver them out of their hand. And let me tell you why Russia is not going to do it. The reason Russia is not going to do it is because Russia is not a Muslim country. And so Russia, Russia is going to look at this as a religious holy war between, Erdic, between um, Iran and Turkey. And Russia is going to stay out of it. Plus, Erdogan and Turkey right now, they are collaborating relationship. Erdogan already has done something recently that has got the world stage talking. And that is this. Um, 
Vladimir Putin has been known for many years to keep politicians and world leaders waiting. He always tries to come in late because he wants them to feel uncomfortable and he has them waiting before he comes in. Recently, he got a taste of his own medicine because the president of Turkey then did the very same thing and had Vladimir Putin waiting for 50 seconds before he came out. If you pull it up online now, what you will see is Vladimir Putin, he's waiting on him um, because there's a room that they go in to sit down and talk. He is waiting on him and all of the media is videoing Vladimir Putin as he is, is waiting there. He's very uncomfortable because he's out, he's out of his element because nobody has ever made him wait. Well, what that says to me as a person that understands eschatology is that Erdogan um, has the kind of character he has the kind of character that would step to a Vladimir Putin. And Vladimir Putin is like, all right, we're really not gonna go there. I'm not saying that Vladimir Putin is scared of Erdogan, but Erdogan is a major player when it comes to the Middle East, when it comes, uh, and, and Turkey is a major player when it comes to the Middle East, when it comes to um, um, Western Asia. And so as a result, Vladimir Putin is not gonna bother that. So now what we're looking at right now the Bible says that the goat is going to stamp upon him. He's going to stamp upon him. He's going to crush him to the point that nobody could deliver the ram out of the goat's tyranny. That's what we're experiencing right now. No, today. Today. That's what's happening right now. If you want, if you want current events and what's happening, how does the word of God match with this and things that are happening? No, I just told you. Hmm. And what we're dealing with with China is the same kind of thing. Um, um, Pelosi has just um, landed um, not too long ago in Taiwan, and um, they were talking about shooting the plane down. Somebody was trying to suggest. Um, to Xi Jinping, um, who is president over China, to shoot the plane down. But if you shot that plane down, oh, you got war for real, because the United States is going to have to literally, I mean, bring the heat on them. And there would have been a world war right there. All right. And the reason that I know that would have been a world war is because Iran would have gotten involved and Russia would have gotten involved and Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia would have gotten involved because all of them are now linked together. And so we know there would have been a war, but God is holding things up. Um, and, uh, and, and before anybody asks, well, why did uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi have to go? She needed to go. I supported her going. Even though I don't support everything that she says, or I don't agree with everything that she says, I agree with the fact that she had to go. And the reason being is because in a in messaging between, in messaging between, um, um, Xi, uh, Xi Jinping, which is president over China, and President Biden. Xi Jinping, after President Biden said, we're going to continue to support Taiwan, Xi Jinping said, don't mess with fire, because if you mess with fire, you'll get burned. So he was sending a message to say, don't let Nancy Pelosi come over here. Now, we have not had any, uh, we have not had anyone that was the head of the house um, over into uh, tai Taiwan in 25 years. The last person that was there um, that was in that position is um, was Newt Gingrich, and I think that was in 1997. He was the last uh, major official to go there. So this was major uh, today that is happening, all right? So now it is telling Xi Jinping, I don't want you, and we had to do that because we didn't do that with uh, Russia and with Putin. And as a result, look at what has taken place. So she had to go to prove that we're not scared of you. We're not gonna be punked because here it is, the United States is the major superpower of the world. And I mean, so strong until Germany right now is getting ready to do a multi-billion dollar deal with our arms uh, dealers that, um, that create um, military um, weaponry here of the United States, they're getting ready to do some major um, deals with Germany because our stuff is that good. The United States, uh, uh, our, our military and the accuracy of what we have is that good. And I want you to think about the fact that if Russia is buying even drones from Iran, 
it is telling that Russia is not really confident in the full strength of their weaponry and their armory. Now, what does this mean for the body of Christ? And I'm gonna take in questions. What this means for the body of Christ is that as we create our own system, because we're going to have to create our own system, our own system when it comes to food, our own system when it comes to fuel. And I said that fuel, our own system when it comes to anything that makes up life. I'm telling people right now, that you may want to consider to get a solar panel on your roof so that there are things that if certain things happen, it's like a generator. If certain things happen while some people are in the dark, other people are not. And you're gonna have to start thinking that way. And I know that there are a lot of people that say, well, God will take care of us. God is taking care of us with knowledge so that we'll know what to do. Please don't get in your mind, well, we're just going to do what we want to do and God is going to take care of us. That is not, that's not Bible. No, ma'am, no, sir, that's not Bible. That's not Bible at all. There are several times that here it is that Paul um, and the apostles, many of them wanted to go places and the Holy Ghost told them they could not go. Y'all better hear the scripture. The Holy Ghost said, don't go. And had they, had they gone, they would have died. When the Holy Ghost has given you guidance and tell you don't do that, then don't do that. Because the Holy Ghost is revealing to you. The Bible says in John, the, the 16th chapter, and the 13th verse, he is the spirit of truth. He is to guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. So we have to follow his lead. If he says, don't go, then don't go. The Bible says, you know, don't tempt the Lord. Because if you tempt the Lord and grieve the Holy Spirit, you can go in there and end your life early. And you can end your life early by going out of the will of God. And right now, it is important for you and I both that we make sure that as God continues to bless us from the seeds that we sow, that we pay our tithe and our offering and we continue to sow seed, but also that we're wise with the increase and we're doing things that is going to secure our family, our friends, the body of Christ, our nation. And the Bible says that there's coming a time according to, uh, according to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 12th verse, that we will lend to nations and not borrow. He didn't say you will lend to people. He said you will lend to many nations and not borrow. One of those nations is going to be Israel. Another one of those nations, according to the word of God, is going to be Jordan. I'm telling you. No, I am telling you. Everything that I'm saying to you right now that is happening in the world, I'm matching it in the word of God and you're getting play by play. That's why we're in Eschatology Tuesday for Warfare Ecology. And please understand, one thing that I recognize and I need you to recognize, that when you start dealing with things, exposing the enemy concerning the end of days, every demonic force and entity is going to come after you to shut your mouth. And the reason being is because anything that is employed by the enemy wants to hinder the work of God from going forth so the people of God cannot get the message that they need. I am considered a watchman. I'm standing on the wall. I have to call and let you know this is what's taking place. This is what's coming. This is what we have to do. We are watchmen. I'm going to take some questions. But if today, if today has made you more informed and has been clear to you today, send a thumbs up, 
to let us know that we're in the right direction and that we're not, because one thing I cannot stand, and that is when preachers talk over people's head. I can't stand that. The Bible says it should be simple enough as a child can really understand it. And I want to make sure that people get it. I want to make sure that if you missed it in the news, that I can catch it for you and say, hey, this is what's happening. And this is what you need to be watching out for. This is what it looks like. Why do you think we have we bought so much land and different things like that? We're trying to make sure and we're growing these crops and we've got cattle and and um, we've got um, goats and we're getting ready to get some um, some other animals and things like that. I may not be able to do do everything for the whole world or for the whole body of Christ, but I can do my part. You can do your part. And we sow in the kingdom and kingdom things. Satan doesn't want you to sow. He doesn't even want you to give. He doesn't want you to sow and give, doesn't want you to tithe. That's why this, this foolishness about tithing is coming up. Have you noticed that the attack concerning sowing, giving, and tithing has come up in a time that we're going up in a recession? Have you noticed that, that, that the attack on giving and tithing and all of that has come up in a time that people need God as never before? The recession is happening. You have gas prices that are going up. You got food shortages. You got now the companies are shrinking the bags and, and, and they're keeping the same price, but they're shrinking the bags so that you don't know that you're getting less for your dollar. No, this is really important right now. And please hear what I'm telling you. Anytime, because they're going to come after me, they're coming after you, and the enemy is trying to shut the mouths of the believer right now because he doesn't want the body of Christ to be ready. And this is what's going to be interesting. The same people that are going to try to kill you are the very same people that are going to say, can you help me? Because now I didn't take heed. The five wise virgins, the five foolish virgins, and the five wise virgins said, I can't give you of my oil. There will not be enough for me. And that's Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. I'm not all knowledgeable, and I don't know everything about the word of God, but I know what I know. I know what I know. And that's why people are listening, and that's why pastors are becoming more empowered and people of God are becoming more empowered because of programs like this and platforms like this that are designed to do one thing, to help the people of God and the body of Christ to prepare. And I keep saying this, and I will say it until the nail goes through. That when quarantine happened and, it, and, and this COVID situation happened, that was a dress rehearsal. Because before that time, no one would have ever said or believed that those things could happen. Please understand, even right now, China has shut so many things down. That's a whole nother teaching and conversation. Because right now, even the billionaires, their money has been locked in in China that the billionaires that are trying to leave China cannot leave. No, y'all need to look. China has locked their billionaires in and told the billionaires, you can travel for business, but you bet not stay. And we're going to lock up your money. And we're going to ask you questions of what you're trying to do with your money. Because some of the billionaires were trying to shift their money over to other banks, international banks, and China will not let them. War is coming. War is coming. And the next war is going to be the sixth trumpet war in Revelations 9. You hear what I'm saying? And I think that it is important that you take heed, that you listen. That's because I want to be able to take my family and do those things too. You know what I say to you? Take heed, trust the Lord, get into the word of God, sow seed. When God 
brings harvest into your life, blessing into your life. Pray for good relationships and, and, and good business connections. Pray for um, to have people to come into your life that will teach you certain things so that there can be a, a level of financial independence, so that we're not only blessed, so that our family is blessed or so our own individual churches are blessed, but that we're a blessing to the body of Christ. That's why I don't give a nickel's worth of dog meat of any individual that has an issue with the fact that we got crops and, and cows and things over there. We're not feeding people just to, so they can just gain weight and get fat and things like that. No, you know, we're feeding, we're feeding people that don't have shelter over their head. You know, we're feeding, we're feeding people that can't get organic food. We're feeding those kinds of individuals. We're feeding people that are poor. We're feeding people that can't provide for themselves in certain instances, or that, that what is being provided for them is not good for them. People are allergic to things. They can't give that to their children. So we have to have some kind of an infrastructure. And at, at Jerusalem and at Bethel, we're, we're, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And please understand something else that is all about also the integrity because you don't put, you don't shove a camera in people's faces when they're poor or they're destitute or something like that, just so that you can get a bunch of Facebook likes and social media likes to, and you embarrass a family or embarrass a father in front of his, his daughter and his sons or his wife or embarrass a mother in front of her children because you're trying to get likes. No, people still have their own self-respect and pride. So as the body of Christ, we have to respect that. But if what's interesting is if you don't show everybody's business, then they say you're not doing ministry. And you're in a catch 22, so to speak. We will not violate the integrity of people for the likes of some people just to say, oh, I see that now. Listen, when you have, what is his name? That is, um, he is over, um, anyway, I, I can't even think of his name. But when you have people that are actually aiding in the system of, of the of the world systems that is going to be a part of the antichrist system when you have them even quoting scripture some of them are quoting scriptures now talking about this is matthew 24 of um wars and rumors of wars and pestilences and things like that i haven't even talked about monkeypox you've got different variances you have different variances of COVID. Now you've got monkeypox. And if some of you saw um, a live that I did with um, uh, one of the uh, local brilliant doctors, Dr. Brian Shackelford, he said one of the things that he is observing and watching is the fact that monkeypox virus and COVID-19 does have the ability, it hasn't done it, but does have the ability to merge. Can you imagine if COVID and monkeypox merge? They have stated, now you pull this up one line, they have stated that 98% of monkeypox has gone into the gay and bisexual community. And so now they're urging people that are in that lifestyle to protect themselves or either come out of the activity because of the possibility what in the world?
Y'all better hear this word. Hear the word. Hear the word. This may be one of those programs that you need to forward to as many people as you can to say, listen, an alarm has been sound. And please understand no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. But the body of Christ is suffering, suffering violence. And the violent, which is the enemy, is trying to take by force the values and the spoils of the people of God. If we were ever going to be serious about our walk with the Lord, the Bible says wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You've watched me. I've gone from one size to another fasting. Just came out of a fast a couple of weeks ago. Probably going to another one maybe in a month or so from now. Because I really need to hear God so that I can continue to be a good watchman, to watch out for the body of Christ. Whether you listen or not, I've got to at least put it out there. With that being said, I'll answer questions, but we're going to so right now. You get this program and you get this knowledge and information commercial free. Commercial free. And please hear what I'm saying. There are companies that would love to be able to get your attention. So we will have to say, hey, we're going to stop just for a moment to have this company's commercial to come on, paying the bills, and we'll be right back to you in just a moment. You ever seen that before? That's, that's what that's about. Hmm. If you would sow today, if there are I'm asking everybody to sow $40. I'm asking for 20 people to sow $100 and five people to sow $200. I'm asking everybody to sow $40. Please do that. But those that can sow that 100 and that $200, that that is not a challenge for you. Please do that today. I'll answer your question in just a moment. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Give LaFi. Put GG Bloomer Ministries um, in the search box and payment link media at bishopbloomer.com. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, zip 27406. And whatever that seed is, if it's 40, if it's 20, if it's 10, if it's five, it's, if it's one, if it's 100, 200, 500, 1,000, whatever that is, would you please so now? And there are some individuals that the Lord is bringing it upon your heart to sow something. Do that today. I don't know what that is. Whatever a gift that the Lord, the Holy Spirit challenges you on, then I ask you to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost and do that right now, please. And we ask you to split the seed. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Split the seed between these two ministries and let's trust God for tremendous favor and great things to happen for each and every one of you. I'll get to the questions in just a moment, but right now I wanna take the time for us to just sow right now.
And I'd ask Vanita, if you would, just continue to show them where they can sell. Because when you tune into something and you become more knowledgeable, so into that, it is good ground. And the Bible says good ground is when you hear the word and are able to understand it. That's what the scripture says good ground is. Hearing the word and understanding the word that you hear. We got to get understanding. Understanding. Hallelujah. All right. And let's let's do that. Jim, dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloom at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Give Lafayette, put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box and mail it to... Um, um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, mail it to um, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Um, Payment link, media at bishopbloomer.com. Um, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Split the seed. Split the seed. Huh. Wow, 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 wow. So much, so much to learn, so much to know, so much knowledge that you have to have. All right, um, Vanita, um, let's take a few questions, okay? Okay, they ask, is Mystery Babylon a system and what system is it? Mystery Babylon, and I, I, I taught this maybe about um, four weeks ago, but it is a, um, it is a system and um, you're dealing with um, the, um, the religion of Catholicism and um, that system, a religious system merging with a political system. And so, and they merge together. Remember the Antichrist um, or the first beast is a politician. The second beast is a religious leader. So they, they merge these two systems together. And this is why the religious leader said that if anyone does not worship the beast or the image of the beast, he should be killed. And you will not be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. Now, all of this is found in Revelations, the 13th chapter, starting at probably the, um, you would start that in the fifth or sixth verse and move all the way to the 18th verse. And everything that I just said um, would show you about that as well. Mystery Babylon that you're talking about now in Revelation 17 and 18. And in the 18th chapter and the fourth verse, the scripture says, come out, of, out, out from among her, which means that Mystery Babylon, um, if, he's, if he's saying that, that is a religious system. And that is a system that wants us to bow down to this ideology that the Antichrist is God. And... Um, people are going to be sucked into that. And the Bible says if it was not for um, the Holy Ghost, um, the enemy would fool the very elect. But because we have the Holy Ghost, he does not have the power to do so. But thank you for your question. The next question. Are the cashless systems coming before the war? Um, they're already started. So most definitely cashless systems are coming before the war. It will not, and I think I talked about this last week, a week before last, cashless system will not take over the United States because um, if um, in the Civil Rights Act, in the Civil Rights Act, um, it, it fights against a cashless system because a cashless system is a discriminatory system. Um, it discriminates against the poor. It discriminates against um, um, people that don't have uh, banking and education and things like that. Uh, so a cashless system cannot flow 100% in the United States because of our laws and the infrastructure that we have. Uh, but the cashless system has already started. Um, it was um, it was some of the major companies like um, Amazon that had tried to do some things when it comes to cashless. And if you look online, they got a lot of 
um, kick back against that because it is a, discrimi a discriminatory system. But the areas that the Antichrist um, will have complete power over, he is not caring about discrimination because he wants everybody to bow down to him. So he can discriminate in that way and then say, well then, if you don't have my mark, um, the number of my name or my name connected to you, you will not buy or sell. And so that will be the muscle play that he's going to try to put in areas um, like um, Russia and um, like China, um, like um, Iran, um, like Germany and, um, and Turkey and things like that, areas that he will have authority and control over. Thank you for your question. Um, the next question. Do you think Donald Trump will be president again? I think he has a very strong chance of being president again. And the reason being is because um, about four weeks ago, um, registered, one million registered Democrats um, went over and by large over into the Republican side. Um, they said that um, a statistic says something like 80% of Democrats do not want to see Joe Biden on the next president uh, presidential um, ballot. Uh, you have a great number of um, Democrats now that said that they have uh, regrets about the choice uh, that they made concerning Joe Biden. Um, when, you have, um, when you have known gangs, known gangs that when um, journalists are putting a, micro, a, a, a microphone and a camera in their face, they're saying, you got gang members that are saying that they would rather have Donald Trump in office than Joe Biden, because when Donald Trump in, was in office, they had uh, gas for $3 and now gas is $6 and different things like that. Pull it up online. So is it possible? Is it probable? Um, yes, it is possible. Yes, it is probable. Um, a lot of people don't know that um, there was something that was not maximized, but Donald Trump had a system to put $500 billion, one half a trillion dollars in the black community. And I think that you're gonna probably start hearing more about that. And um, so it is, a, it is a strong possibility that Donald Trump could uh, go into presidency. The thing that would war against him um, would be um, number one age because the United States does not want um, anyone too old in office, we're just seeing that there are a lot of problems uh, that come with that. And so I want to be respectful of it, but um, there is a very strong uh, possibility and probability of that, that happening. Uh, uh, you will see online that Donald Trump stated that if Joe Biden gets in office, these are the things that he lists the things that would happen. And those things are happening. Those kind of things are, are very good uh, political points that 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 you can run on. Do I believe, because Donald Trump has not said that he is going to run for president. Do I believe that he's going to run for president? Yes. Yes. Yes, I believe he's going to run for president. And um, please look at the culture of the United States. That when everything is well economically, United States votes morally when um, things are bad economically, the United States votes economically. Things are bad economically. So because they're bad economically, that when you go to the polls, you're gonna see people voting based on economy and not morality. And now they're getting ready to, I believe, try to mix economy and um, theology and morality together. And it is going to be a very interesting election. Thank you for your question. Next question. Who was the woman that went into the wilderness to deliver a child? Um, well, I mean, in the Old Testament, um, I think you're talking about Hagar, unless you are referring to um, Revelations, the 12th chapter, 
and of the woman that delivered the child, and that is Israel, and the child that she delivered was Jesus. So Old Testament, you're talking about Hagar. New Testament, and I think that's probably, now that I think of it, that may be what you're talking about. Evelyn, let's go over to uh, Revelations 12, and uh, I think that that may be what this person is uh, talking uh, about. Um, let's look at um, let's look at uh, Revelation twelve uh, verse four. Would you read that for me, please, Evelyn? Yes. Sir. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Oh, all read read five and six as well. And she brought forth a man child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to His throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. All right. So uh, if that is what you're talking about, then that is the Israel. The child that Israel brought forth is Christ. All right. And so that's what it's talking about. And it says that ultimately through the um, through the 14th verse, if you merge the 14th verse and the sixth verse together, you'll find that the um, that the United States is going to be a part of protecting and providing uh, for uh, Israel. Uh, for the three and a half years of the tribulation period, because tribulation period is only three and a half years. I think that's what you're talking about and hope that helps you. Thank you for your question. I'm going to answer, uh, I'm trying to answer at least two more questions and think I'll be done. And for those of you that have not, let's stop just for a second. Please make sure that you're sewing right now. A dollar sign, General of Warfare, uh, Zell Bloomer at Bishop Bloomer on paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Um, you can mail it to Gigi Boomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Give Lafa, I put Gigi Boomer Ministries in the search box. You can um, do payment link at media at bishopbloomer.com. Um, for Dr. Kevin E. Williams, you can uh, do um, um, a dollar sign, Dr. Kevin E. Williams for cash app Zell, Dr. Kevin E. Williams at, um, at gmail.com. You can mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 274. Oh, six, and we ask you to split that seed. Those people that are going to give you a 40, please give 40 or the best offering that you can today. Um, for those individuals that are willing to give the 100 or the 200 um, or more, would you please give that today? Because this helps us in our efforts and what we have to do concerning kingdom and kingdom things. Please understand something. Nobody's begging for anything. If the Holy Ghost is not leading you to, then I'm, I'm not going to war with you or fight with you about that. I will say that you're gaining knowledge, you're gaining information. And according to Galatians, the sixth chapter and the sixth verse, that when someone is teaching you, they are worthy of um, you being able to be a blessing to them. If you choose not to do that, that is fine. Because I'll never want it to be said that in turn, that um, anything is being done but integral ministry. So with that being said, Vanita, would you go ahead um, um, and give me your next question? Is it true that Jesus will return after the two witnesses in Revelations 11 and 3? Um, yes. Um, 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 Revelations 11 verses 1 through 3 um, actually um, talks about um, Revelations um, 11 verses 1 and 2. John is measuring um, the temple um, and he's showing where to measure and where not to measure. Uh, the third verse starts talking about the two witnesses um, uh, during the tribulation period, which is three and a half years. The two witnesses will be uh, doing and warring against the Antichrist. The scripture says that eventually the Antichrist uh, will kill them in three days. They will rise and they will be raptured up. I do believe that when they are raptured up, it is going to be the rapture of the church and everything all at the same time. That is one of the keys that is there. So, yes, um, I agree with that. Um, next question. Approximately how long do we have to get a, our final preparations in order? Money, food, alternative power, sources, etc. 
I think that uh, right now we still have about a, um, and that's really a hard, that's an iffy question because you never know how this war is going to turn and what Vladimir Putin is going to do because right now he's got his thumbprint right now on the uh, gas and oil. So it could be as small as three months and it could be as large as 18 months. Um, I don't think it's gonna go 18 months. I think that if I was going to put my best thought on it, I would say uh, somewhere between the next um, eight, uh, eight to 12 or 13 months. Uh, we have that. Thank you for your question. Um, I'm going to have to do one more question, then I got to go to my Bible study. Uh, Vanita, give me that one last question. That was actually our last question. Excellent. All right, guys. So uh, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you again. Please so dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB ministries, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. You can mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries, post office box. 3867 Durham, North Carolina, 27702. You can um, give in Givelify by, by putting GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box. Payment link media at bishopbloomer.com. Also uh, for Dr. Kevin A. Williams, uh, please send it to um, at Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Um, you can mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. And we ask you to split the seed because the threefold cord is not quickly broken. The Bible says the seed must go into the ground and die and abide alone. But if it dies, it's going to bring forth much fruit. Sow your seed. Because when you sow your seed, the favor of God is going to consume um, and bless your life. I pray blessings over you in any way, shape, or form. Those that don't have it to sow, you don't have it to sow. Never be ashamed that you don't have anything to sow. But I would ask you to do this. So then by sharing this with as many people as you can, so people can get the knowledge. If something blessed you, tell them where it blessed you, what blessed you, and be a blessing to somebody else. If you learn how to be a blessing to somebody else, God will always send blessing, seed in your direction so that um, you can continue to walk in the promises of God. All right, uh, Pastor King, are you here? I'm here. Can you, can you see me? Uh, and now I can see you. Now I can see you. Um, yeah. I'm going to over to you. I want to say to everybody on behalf of Bishop Bloomer and myself and Evelyn and Pastor King and Benita and Tamila and anybody else that I don't know back there, we appreciate everything that you do for the kingdom of God because everything that we do is for the kingdom of God. Yes. Blessings. And I turn it back over to Pastor King. God bless you. Have a wonderful Bible study tonight. Thank you, sir. You too. You are. Well, this is it, everyone. You, everyone still have an opportunity to sow. And if we can get like another maybe five people so a twenty dollar seed that'll put us right where we need to be, and we'll go off the air in about a minute. So if we did, if you got if you that one that's holding on to that twenty or that twenty one or that forty, you still have an opportunity to sow to this program. Like I said, it takes finances, it takes expenses to make this engine run, and so we want it to run like a well oil machine. So we need your support. We need your support. And we're welcoming at this moment. We're not begging. We're just asking you that if the Lord is speaking to your heart to sow into this warfare college and, and that uh, as it has been a blessing to many of millions or thousands that are watching it, you will receive a reward. So if we give me a last chance to give. Let's do it now in Jesus name. Dollar sign general warfare. Zell Bloomer at Bishop Bloomer dot com. PayPal. PayPal me at GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer. 844-889-1559. We give me another 30 to 45 seconds. Let's get that seed in the ground. Let's get that seed in the ground. And we'll see you all tomorrow on uh, the Word Wednesday. It's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be powerful. Amen. It's going to be great. This is Warfare College. The general, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little meeting with the general. So God bless you. Uh, let's do this one more time. 15 seconds. We're going down the countdown. Those of you that wants to sow, let's do it now. In Jesus' name, dollar sign general warfare, Zell, Bloom at Bishop PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries, takes a gift, takes Bloom to 844-889-1559. Well, thank you all so much for watching and tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for Warfare Ecology to see what God is saying on tomorrow. So until tomorrow, the paint on my door. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast.
and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. It's covenant protection. Instructions are... Come, my people, go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21 in the Message Bible. Go 